boy. This your girl should come and come to loud, loud and color. Hey, my people. Hey, my people. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. Give me thumbs up, thumbs down. I appreciate the love. Welcome to my new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for showing me love. Thank you for liking, commenting. Give me thumbs up, thumbs down. To the ones that have not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel. Okay, this is part two of Who Remembers the Tragedy of Girl X from Chicago, Illinois. Okay, now I'm going to continue to read to y'all the story of Girl X. Okay, at first I didn't know who the baby was and then I turned her over, said Thompson, 34. I thought she was playing, I said. The girl's name get up then i noticed she was foaming at the mouth and had a little blood in the corner of her mouth i thought she was having a seizure i picked her up and untied the t-shirt from around her neck she hugged me when i picked her up she was just staring into space thompson and a friend william adams carried the child into mary johnson's apartment across the hall they laid her on the living room sofa and dialed 911. When we saw the blood on the t-shirt on her t-shirt, we thought she had been cut or stabbed, said Johnson, an older woman who is a longtime friend of the victim's family. Then Sharon yelled, Oh my God, she's been molested. She wasn't unconscious, but she was out of it. She couldn't say anything. It looked like she was trying to talk. She was grunting and shaking. I was on the phone, screaming and yelling to the paramedics. They got here like they were down the street. Meanwhile, Adam, 18, went down to the fourth floor to get the child's mother. She was crying and screaming when I told her what had happened, he said. Later, police found the fourth grader's gym shoes and hooded jacket in the incinerator. They confirmed that she had been accosted in the stairwell between 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. and taken to the suspect's apartment where she was assaulted. The assailant sprayed roach repellent in her mouth and left her for dead on the seventh floor landing, discarding her on the cement floor like a piece of crumbled paper. The janitor who found the girl was new to Cab Cabrini Green. She was so frightened by the incident that she quit her job that afternoon. She said she would never come back here again, Adam said. Kids once felt safe. Such a vicious crime was never supposed to happen to one of the babies. This is how the women in the 1121 North Larrabee building refer to all the children who live there. Not since seven-year-old Dentrell Davis was killed by a sniper's bullet as his mother walked him to school in 1992, has there been such an extreme act of violence perpetrated on a child in Cabrina Green? Okay. The seven-story building where Girl X lived is sandwiched between two high rises on the western boundary of Cabrini, the epicenter of the public housing complex. It also is a hub for the gang's driving drug business. Okay. The building stands directly across the street from Cabrini's shopping district, a series of storefront liquor shops, stops that double as grocery markets. The, biz, the busy Larrabee Street is the place to go for those who want to see or be seen. 
Young men gather there from morning to night, carefully eyeing every passing vehicle. Y'all, this is sad. Teenage mothers, three in a row, push baby carriages on the sidewalk. A father plays a game of baseball with his sons on the patchy lawn. It's grass worn away by the heavy foot traffic. CTA buses stop to pick up women heading to work and students going to school. Police squad cars park at the curb site. I lean briefly, then moving on. The constant activity outside the building, some residents said, was why the children felt so safe inside. Day and night, they roam freely through the hallways, up and down the stairwell, the gang members serving as security against outside danger. In this community of second, third, and fourth generation families, adults accept varying levels of responsibility for everyone's kids, the way extended families always have done. If, if the grown-ups don't know all the children by name, they certainly know them by face. The same is true of the children whose mothers went to school with each and every, each and with each other, and whose grandparents have been acquainted for years. Residents have learned how to cope with gunfire, drug dealing, and even murderers that occasionally occur in public housing. But this crime, unsolved for three months, took an extreme, took, took an extraordinary toll. After the crime, children were no longer allowed to go outside alone. Everyone walked in groups of two or more. They could not take the elevator, mainly because it is known to break down between floors. And before heading out the door for school, children as young as six armed themselves with steak knives. Six-inch but butcher, uh, butcher knives, sticks, and mace. For all they knew, the person who attacked girl X could still be around. As it turned out, police said he had lived on the fifth floor. Calm returns. Girl X friends still gather every afternoon in the first floor apartment in building 1121 that doubles as an after school program and a Chicago Housing Authority resident organization. From three to five, the children are expected to do their homework, but mostly they play games, do each other's nails, and catch up on the latest news from the area's elementary schools. Okay. Mitris Gatewood, a CHA employee, has the different difficult task of keeping the rambunctious group under control. With a staff of one, she concedes that it is virtually impossible. In recent months, Gatewood has observed a positive change in the children. They are all calmer now than they were when it first happened. As long as they feel protected, they are okay. Okay. During the first or two, during the first week or two, they cried, she said. Some stayed away from the center. For those who did come, Gaywood tried to offer some explanation for what had happened. But rape, even for those, is hard to understand. I heard that when someone gets raped, they grow up faster. Is that true? 11-year-old Natasha Murphy asked a woman she had just met. I carry a knife. If a stranger walks up, I'll stab him in the arm, the eye, the nose, even his private parts. See, this is no way for a child to live, okay? No way for a child to live. It's awful.
Counselors and social workers have talked with the children in all of the public and Catholic schools that serve Cabrini. But the girls have not been allowed to visit their friend at Schwab. So what they crave most is information. We hear she's walking, but she ain't talking, one girl said. And the others repeated in unison. Yeah, she's walking, but she ain't talking. Time to move on. After 40 years in the same apartment, girl ex's grandmother, Zeta Bohar, Bolar, is ready to move. Her living room is filled to the brim with boxes and black plastic bags containing the lifelong collections of a 60-plus-year-old woman who has spent all of her adult life in the same place. I want to be on my on, on my own. I never have before because I always had children, said Bola, who shares the three-bedroom apartment with a grown son and a daughter who is there temporarily. I raised 11 children and two grandchildren here. It has been painful, Bola said, to stay in the building where one of the children she raised was attacked. I think about her every night, wishing she was here. I miss her knocking at my door. She spent most of her time here. When she turned nine, her mother decided she wanted to raise her. The fact that they arrested a suspect who reportedly confessed hasn't changed Bola's feelings. She always believed the assailant lived in the building. Now, she only hopes they have the right person. Bolar said she had grown tired of looking at, people's, at people she's known for years and wondering if they knew who did it. Okay. There will be a, a, a part three, y'all. Shortly after the attack, the CHA moved girl ex's mother, Belinda, Belinda, and her three other children from the from their fourth floor apartment in Cabrini into a three-bedroom skater site house on the south side. Early on, Bola was certain the CHA would move her too. They're moving me to the Gold Coast, she said a month ago. Now she isn't sure when or if she will move at all. Recently, Cabrini residents came to Bolas A. They couldn't offer her a new building, but they gave her a $400 raise during a skating party. Okay. Brenda McNair, 42, lives in a different building in Cabrini and had never met Bola, but her grandchildren are friends with Girl X, and that was enough to propel her to action. I want to donate money to the family for car fare to go back and forth to the hospital and for incidentals. They need money to eat while they are visiting her. It's like you do when there's a death in the family. Okay. I'm going to stop here. I'm just going to talk about this part. It's so sad what happened to this child. And this grandmother, like you, like I read to y'all, she stayed there for 60 years. She stayed, I'm not, she, she stayed there for majority of her life, y'all. Looking at everybody like suspects. Wondering if this person did it, if that person did it, if this person did it, if that person did it. That would drive anybody crazy. That would have drove me crazy to continue to look at people that I have known for years and wonder if they did this to my grandbaby. I wouldn't have been able to live there. I wouldn't have been able to continue to trust nobody. I wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how to act. 
I would not know how to interact with nobody if I just kept suspecting everybody of harming my grandchild. I just would not know how to act y'all. I just, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I just wouldn't. And it's sad the way that this baby was found. It was, it, it was just, it was just, when I first heard this story, y'all, I, I cried for days. I cried for months. I cried for years. Wondering what, wondering what kind of sick freak could do this to a baby. I have nieces and nephews now. Y'all that know me know I would die for mine. I would die for mine. At all costs, I would protect mine. I would kill somebody over mine. The police will see my face constantly. Okay? Constantly, the police will see my face. I would not let nobody rest until the assailant is found that did this to my baby. Ain't no way. There's just no way. I could not live without doing anything to get justice for my baby. There's just no way. Y'all have met, y'all have seen Araya. Y'all have seen JJ. You have not seen my other niece, my other two nieces and my other nephew. Because they're not here all the time. You have not seen them at all. I will protect my babies. Do you hear me? I would kill for mine. I hope y'all feel the same way about yours. Comment down below and tell me what you think of part two so far. In the meantime and in between time, make sure you give those big thumbs up. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell twice to be notified. If you're an old subscriber, make sure you know case I don't share my video. Like I always say, God only gives you one life, y'all. Please live it. Mm -hmm. Bye.